Oh my god. <laughs> They're quoted saying, be sure to buy a tub of OxyClean with this to get the blood and diarrhea stains out of your underwear. I can't, guys, I can't, I can't. Um, it was, I don't know if it, it was a couple of weeks ago, we had, we had this huge discussion about how does the throat know? <laughs> Do you guys huge, remember that? Huge discussion. Huge discussion. <laughs> Actually, here, we'll just play it just so if you, if you missed the episode, this is the clip right here. How does your throat know to put the food in one way and the air in another? I have no idea. Okay. If you know the answer to this, letters at sickboypodcast.com. And actually, it's how funny does because a throat know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I messed it up this morning. How does your throat know? When you how does the up? throat know? <laughs> Into my lungs. Yeah. Give me a piece of food right now. That thing's going in my stomach, not my lungs. How how does that like like magnets? It's got to be an, does, it's got to be work, something you know? to do with an air versus a solid or, or a liquid. It's got to just know. It's got to know. <laughs> <laughs> I re- I'm racking my brain on this one, I, <laughs> guys. I really I just I don't fucking know how it works. <laughs> okay, so that was the that was the clip, and we had a bunch of uh, smarty pantses. Um, uh, right in to explain to us that it's the epiglottis, <laughs> the lovely epiglottis that uh, does the trick. But I believe, Lauren, one of the people that wrote in actually wrote um, uh, like a, a thing to say, a checkout video of, of um, it was like barium swallowing tests or yeah. something of that degree. It sounded really hot. It did, didn't it? Well, <laughs> that was what struck me, yeah. So I, I found one of those videos while I was doing that, I found this article that kind of touches on what's going on um, when it comes to like aspiration. Is this so hot that it's not safe for work? Oh, <laughs> so we're about to watch some porn. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I also wanted to say the people who said it's the epiglottis, like the, some people just wrote us a message like, it's the epiglottis, you idiot. Duh. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. And like, I, I was know. like, do you even know how the epiglottis works, though? Because like, it's nice to say the name of what it is that it, but like, what actually happens? Well, like, that's that is that's what I want to like, know. How do you digest food? <laughs> so, Your stomach, you duh. Idiot. <laughs> it's it is quite interesting, and actually, this is what I wanted to get into. So, uh, I found this article that was called "What's Going On When Something Goes Down the Wrong Pipe." I think we've all had this. We've all had this experience. That's, name of a porno. That's, a, that's an iffy Google search. Well, I found it on Pornhub.com. <laughs> so, uh, understanding aspiration from how it happens to when you should see a doctor. This is actually a little like PSA. So, for people who who don't know this, because I actually didn't, I didn't fucking know this. I've aspirated before. I think we all have. Where it's like, you know, you're eating, snacking on something. Dude, it's the worst. You get excited while you're snacking <laughs> and you breathe in. Yeah. And then you and then you go into like kind of a panic because you're like yeah. coughing and choking. I did it with an oat cake last week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, so basically what happens there is you're, you're sucking something down the wrong tube, right? The wrong pipe. Yeah. Um, so when four material, food, drink, or stomach acid or fumes enter your windpipe, which is, do you know the, the term for this? Trachea. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Trachea. Ding, 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 ding. Winner. Uh, so, so that goes down your trachea. And when that happens, uh, that is known as aspiration. And normally, a well-coordinated muscle interaction in your lower throat propels food into your food tube, which esophagus. is your esophagus, yes. And it protects your airways. And your vocal cords and epiglottis, so your vocal cords are also a part of this. Oh, crazy. They help keep your airways closed off from things like food, drink, or saliva. And it's an automatic process, so you don't think about it. You just naturally do it. Uh, but sometimes that automatic <laughs> thing fucks up, and you are aspirating. So your body, when you aspirate, immediately goes into fight or flight, and you get this like outpouring of adrenaline that boosts your heart rate and your blood pressure, and then it causes a, a gag or a cough <laughs> reflex that kicks in automatically. Mm-hmm. And you- oftentimes that fixes the problem. Hmm. Do you, do you guys have a food that you that you like almost always aspirate on? Oat cakes. Because <laughs> when you said oat cakes, so for dry. me for me it's popcorn, and oh, uh, and like huh. and I think what it is is I I'm the type of guy, uh, you know. Lawrence, hey, Lawrence, listen. <laughs> so sue me. I'm the type of guy who puts a lot of uh, uh, popcorn flavoring on. Yeah, uh, like yes. I really like that powdery yeah, stuff. You do. Right? White cheddar's where it's at. White cheddar's great. Dill pickles, salt and vinegar. I'm I yeah. like I'll sometimes I mix mix them all up like swamp water, like swamp, kind of a swamp, swamp water of powders. Ugh, so good. Powder. But but I find that if I take 
and sometimes I've, I feel like I've done this. Maybe it seems weird, but I feel like I've done this where I've taken the bag of popcorn and like, you know, when you dump that powder in, it's almost like sort of like just sort of sits in the air on top of the bag. Mm. Yes. You can like almost like take it and breathe it in. Yeah. yeah. And then it just goes. <gasps> That'll cause an aspiration. Oh, yeah. That yeah. makes me aspirate like yeah, crazy. For sure. And then when I'm chucking too. the popcorn in my mouth yeah. and just, oh, it just uh, immediately I'm like. <clears throat> I did that with spicy Cheez-Its last night. <laughs> I was really stoned and they were like just the bits of spicy Cheez-Its, but that's yeah. all I wanted. And I just took the bottom of the bag and went like, uh, and then it was like the cinnamon challenge <laughs> with like fake cheese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was laughing because earlier what I most commonly aspirate is my own spit. Like, I don't yeah. know what that says about yeah. me as a person. But it's I think I'm that. with you on that one. I, I can't think of a food that I yeah. aspirate on more than others. But so That's why I'm always slurping my mouth up, Taylor. When um, like, oh, my God. Dude, you make the most nasty sound. Have you noticed that, Bo Bry? Have you noticed that he, I, oh, when he's sitting around? All the time. He like he gets he yeah dude he gets a he gets an accumulation of saliva in his mouth. I got a it wet is. mouth, and he, he's, <laughs> his mouth is so wet. Ugh. And we're sit, I'm sitting beside him, Jesus and we're 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 looking at we're we're <laughs> thinking about like uh, design stuff for for shirts we're putting together. And Bride just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Yo, Cardi, Cardi B's got a whop. I got a wham. A and wet he, ass mouth. You do have a wet ass mouth, and he doesn't even <laughs> oh and he doesn't even notice. And I turn to him and I go, "You know, you just did that slurp thing with your mouth." And, listen, and you know, it's funny when you do it when you call him out on it. He goes, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, no. I, go, I literally never do that. I literally fucking never do that. Brian's and, uh, like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, dude. And you, you remind know, me of an alien character guys, on Rick and Morty. I, I <laughs> honestly, I'm looking. I'm looking. It, please write us letters at sickboypodcast.com if you also go to the dentist and. And they're constantly using that fucking vacuum in your mouth. I think that's kind of common. Like I, I'm all, but like I, I think that you think it's common. I think I like, think it's common for most people at the dentist. But I think what you need is that thing <laughs> all day in your fucking <laughs> yeah, Brian fish needs, hook in your face. Brian needs yeah. a little. Brian needs a little <laughs> pack yeah. a, 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 attached to a vacuum. fanny pack. With a little motor in it that, yeah. can, suck up, that, just, that can suck up Like a little saliva. straw just went right in my mouth and was yeah. sucking out saliva all day. So uh, <laughs> medical doctor Bodan Picturco uh, at the Cleveland Clinic for Pulmonary Function Lab. Uh, it was the, uh, the clinic's pulmonary function lab director um, uh, said, quote, this is often brief as uh, if we promptly expel the aspirated material. However... At the other extreme, it may follow eventually with fever and reduced oxygen levels requiring medical attention for possible pneumonia, Whoa. which I didn't know. So how should you respond if your cough alone doesn't do the trick? First of all, don't panic. Okay. I think that's a good, mm. that's a good sign. That's a good thing to do. That's what I immediately would have jumped to. And then, <laughs> and then what do you think the second step is? So don't panic. And then what's the second step? <laughs> uh, drink some water. Nope. Uh, stop what you're doing and lie on your belly with a cushion under your hips. This tilts your windpipe slightly downward, which can help expel the foreign material. I really want to see a scene where somebody's in like an office yeah. and like they're choking Does their that. lunch. Where's a pillow? <laughs> oh my God. A pillow. Someone Where's give me a pillow over my hips. I need to, I need, I need to very gradually <laughs> incline, put a decline on my, on my windpipe. I'm not fucking panicking, but I need a pillow. <laughs> so, uh, when should you see a doctor? So if you're still coughing two to four hours after aspiration, or if blood appears, oh, call a doctor. Yeah. Uh, watch for fever chills and or a cough that produces discolored mucus or sharp stabbing chest pain. Ugh. Quote, over 24 hours swallowing aspiration, respiratory infection such as bronchitis or pneumonia may complete the process. Dr. Pacherko says, quote, when healthy, your bronchial tubes are sterile, delicate structures that don't tolerate the intrusion of abnormal material. So check out this video. This is a video of people in x-ray swallowing barium and you it's hard to to describe it it go to our youtube if you're listening at home you got to see this because it's pretty interesting wow but you can see the epiglottis wow. that little thing that's like a little bit dark that kind of folds over as soon as they swallow mm -hmm. that's the epiglottis it goes bop and it like pushes it to the back and you can see the esophagus is this very small tube in the back where the barium goes down. Now, oh, first, the, my first thought is whatever they're drinking must taste awful because <laughs> barium, dude, I've had a barium enema. Didn't taste good. It didn't <laughs> taste good up my ass. I'll tell you that right Maybe now. they flavor it for you. Maybe, but fuck, you, dude, barium? You, I don't know. You can tell how things what is taste, barium? though. Like, what is barium it? Barium is a... Is, I mean, is, I know like what it... 
I know. It's I like, know. fuck it up a glottis, you dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> a barium is like a liquid that is that is visible in x-ray. Yeah. But I mean. It's like milky, right? It's, it's, it's a, a well, at least, it yeah, yeah. It, yeah. The bags that I had shoved up my yeah. a-hole were milk, bags yeah. of milk. But no, like, what know. is it? Like, what's it made of? I'm pretty sure like, it's an barium. element. It's metal, it's an it? element. Yeah. yeah, it's an element. Yeah. Periodic table of elements, number uh, B B A uh, B A you know. number thir- thirty nine. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's its mass? <laughs> Is that actually true? Look it up. Mm-hmm. Almost yeah, certainly. Well, somebody not. look it up. Fucking look it up. <laughs> <laughs> you got like a one in hundred. <laughs> yeah. Let's watch yeah. Lauren's yeah. face here when yeah. she's shocked that I was right. If it he... is the symbol B A. The atomic number, however, is fifty six. Ah, yeah. shit, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, somewhere around Seven. there. Right. Yeah. Probably in one of those columns over there, though, around thirty nine. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how you can like, um, you know how things taste if you've never tasted them by their. You can smell them. So like when you smell something and you're like. Mm. Oh, I know exactly how that like would a, taste. Like I a penny even... that you find on the ground. Right. Yeah. But you've tasted a penny before too, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So that's kind of I test cheating. Them. But like, I guess like, <laughs> like dog shit. When I find it. <laughs> like when I pick up my dog shit, immediately I'm like, I know how that would taste. I don't think you do. <laughs> I'm I not think you would try. Doesn't it shock <laughs> you? <laughs> doesn't it shock you that dogs like to eat shit? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, even though you know that they can smell it. The, 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 the word like, that what, jumps why? to mind is re- remarkable. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. certainly remarkable, it's remarkable, that, they remarkable. They would, <laughs> that they would do that. Um, so, so here's some prevention tips. Uh, and, and we're going to put this whole thing to rest here. This will never come up on the fucking podcast again. <laughs> but we're going to end this saga, the epiglottis saga, with some prevention tips. Once so number one, don't talk with your fucking mouth full, Brian. Uh, talking keeps your airways really open that. while you swallow when they should be closed. Number two, take your time when you eat, Brian. Uh, divide your... Actually, this is for Taylor. Yeah. Divide your food into small portions and okay. chew each bite thoroughly. And also, I think the so back to the don't talk with them. This is actually is all for Taylor. This yeah, is, it, it really too, is. Actually. I'm also surprised that you <laughs> haven't aspirated to death yet. <laughs> this doesn't have to be a fucking intervention because for my, it eating, is. For it my is now. eating habits. It is now. Because you're licking pennies all the time. And on top of that, you're fucking... You eat your food. I like and the you, taste of metal. And when you eat, you do this. You go... <laughs> You breathe. <laughs> like he does, he does Dude, exactly you that. Do. Yes, yes. Which and I he, like. That has to keep your fucking epiglottis way the fuck up. If we weren't or, having sorry, this conversation, or, no, open. Yeah, open. If we, if we weren't having this conversation right now, and you just started walking around going, <laughs> I would be like Taylor. Taylor eating. Yeah, yeah. That would be like the best charades uh, performance ever. Number three is avoid <laughs> avoid heavy fried and seasoned foods at least three hours before bedtime. Yeah. This helps keep your stomach from producing digestive juices that are more likely to prompt acid reflux and backwash into your esophagus, throat, and lungs when you lie down. Popcorn seasoning. And then number four, take care of your teeth and gums. This is an interesting one. Quote, with good oral hygiene, <laughs> Taylor, what? you can clear even the, the occasional aspiration quickly with no complication, complicating infection from bacteria from your mouth or lasting damage to your bronchial tubes and lungs. So if you I have, have beautiful, beautiful teeth and beautiful gums. Pink, it's a pinkish, tremendous, the best, it's fucking, the best trem- gums, fucking best, tremendous, best it's fucking, teeth. you know what? I look at these gums and I say, these are the best gums. I walked into the room and I said, look at these gums. <laughs> but isn't, the best gums. isn't that super interesting? Like if you've got a shitty mouth and like shitty teeth, if you aspirate because of the bacteria and the shit going on in oh. your nasty ass, like a uh, halitosis filled fucking oh. mouth, you are, you are likely sending bacteria ridden shit into your windpipe, which yeah. is in, inevitably going to cause that mm. pneumonia and yeah. or bronchitis. Gotta Nobody's got time for that. If you must. You remember that song? Yeah. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> folks. Uh, oh, and you know what? I also have here. Here's a little diagram. Uh, the epiglottis, you can see there, that little like sort of flap. But look at look at the, the thing I thought was interesting here. You know when you take massive swallows? Look at the difference in the size between your trachea and your, your esophagus. Hold on. The big one is yeah, the trachea. The big oh, okay. one yeah. is the trachea. Yeah, but it probably expands, you know, like it probably. Oh, sure. Like, like, your, yeah, like your butthole. But it, yeah, like your, yeah, exactly like your butthole. Very the, stretchy. Like the, the <clears throat> like mass of air going, even though the air is invi- invisible, like it's still like the mass of like the, the oxygen it, that you're breathing in would need to take up a lot of space. It's just like I, imagine I, I trying suppose. to breathe through it. It really, straw. Uh, it I really. I think the trachea is a lot harder too. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get fucking. Can you make that <laughs> fucking Louise is gonna email now? I love like, that. Actually, the I love the is really soft and delicate. <laughs> I love the hand shape that you made there. It really makes you think about um, when you see people. You know how some people just have this incredible capacity to ch- like chug 
well, usually beer, but I mean, I'm sure any, somebody who can chug beer can chug anything. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you and it literally just looks like they've opened up a cavern in mm-hmm. their in their throat. There's also a trick to like down. your breathing. You have to adjust the way you breathe. Like you're supposed to aspirate to, it to in. just like chug. It's actually a, a yogic thing, um, right? Because they yeah. one of the practices. Yeah, it wasn't beer. It was. Um, Shotgunning is a yogic practice. Like, have you yeah, seen okay. that guy on mm. drunk people doing things? Who's uh, who like, he he he's like he's become this internet you know meme sensation because it just he just he just can fucking chug beer like from it's, the mugs. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's and he's yeah. he's doing like a pint in one gulp. You guys want to see how fast I can drink this beer? No, I don't, dude. Yes. I don't want you to, dude. That, that mic's expensive and it gets wet if it gets wet with beer. Okay, good. Thank you. I can't go any faster than that. <laughs> Ew, that's mm. gr- nasty. Um, been listening. I feel bad. So uh, uh, moving right along, uh, this week uh, it's not going to be published for a little bit, but this week we had a lovely conversation with a woman from South South Africa, um, all about uh, her experience with endometriosis, and. Um, one of the interesting things that she was talking about was, were some like new treatments that are kind of on the horizon. Um, and found, uh, came across this, uh, interesting article that I believe Lo you, you <clears throat> put, uh, in the, in our Slack, um, about an inflammation gene, which may be possible drug target for endometriosis. Mm-hmm. So, uh, endometriosis, obviously, an issue for a lot of uh, a lot of <clears throat> very common people issue. with vaginas. Um, uh, the this advance in research offers a potential non hormonal way to treat the mysterious and very complex disease. And and complex is uh, definitely one way of putting it because mm. in our conversation with Yane, um, uh, it, 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 you definitely hear like in her description of her experience how complex it is. Mm-hmm. Um, researchers have discovered a potential new way to fight endometriosis, a prevalent, mysterious, and hard to treat disease that causes pain in, in and infertility in women. The approach, which came to light after more than two decades of intensive genetic research, blocks a particular gene, reducing discomfort and inflammation, at least in mice. So I think this this thing is very much Ma- male mice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> male mice. Only. That's right. Male mice only. We know this. We if know you, this. <laughs> um, you know what's funny though? So far, we've only tested on males, but we are pretty fucking sure it's going to translate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> males are like the control group. You know what's, yeah. uh, you know what's interesting? Do you, like, I know you're joking, but do you think? Oh yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, probably for sure. Yeah, right? yeah probably. I mean, based on everything we heard so yeah. far, with when it comes to why. For, and again, for folks that think that we're being um, uh, rude, this is this is the reality of yeah. of mice being used in studies. Is that typically they are male, and which is why, which is probably the reason why, still to today, two thousand twenty one, something like endometriosis is still considered so quote unquote mysterious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is. It does blow my mind in the in the context of that conversation that something so common can take so long to diagnose and get yeah. to the bottom mm-hmm. of. Yeah. Because I mean, you just think like the more common something is the, mm-hmm. the more, the, the more quickly a, a physician is going to, to look at that as a, as the possibility and go down that road. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you'd think you'd yeah. go most common to least common. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, but what the fuck do I know? Yeah. yeah. I'm not a physician. Well, the other thing that we've been advocating for is that we want equal testing on both uh, male mice and female. That's right. You heard it here. Mice. We are advocating yeah. for that here yeah. on Sick Boy Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's a men's we right. Men change. <laughs> We're making a stand. Men's rights for mice. That's what we uh, want. Quote, it's a really magnificent <laughs> Brian's, piece. Brian's a hard <laughs> men's rights activist. For mice. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> uh, quote, it's a really magnificent piece of sleuthing says Linda Griffith, a biological engineer who studies endometriosis at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. However, she cautions that because the condition is complex, the theoretical treatment will provide will probably relieve symptoms in only a subset of patients. She was said she said, quote, it pulls together so many pieces of the puzzle, but it's not the final piece. Uh, so for folks that don't know, endometriosis affects 
uh, an estimated, according to this article, one in 10 women in the disease tissue that lines the inside of the uterus and is shed each menstrual cycle also grows outside the uterus. The condition causes severe pain, especially during periods when the rogue lining attempts to shed, creating scar tissue that can essentially glue internal organs together. Eesh. Only wow. invasive surgery can remove this scarring. Wow. What uh, is that? 10%? 10%? One in every 10 that's, women. So that's yeah. 350 million people? Something like that? In Canada? In, in the world? In what? No, in, in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, more than that. 7 billion. So 3.5 billion, half the population. Yeah, 10% right. okay. of 3.5. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Oh, wow. 50 million. Good math. Uh, hormonal treatments such as estrogen suppressors can alter or just dis, uh, dis- disrupt the menstrual cycle, but finding the right one can involve months of trial and error. And this is something that we covered in our conversation with Yane. Uh, hormones can also cause a range of side effects, obviously, including weight gain, mood changes, and headaches. For some people, those treatments don't help at all. The new study is a quote, labor of love building on research stretching back to the 1990s says team leader Karina Zondervan an endometriosis researcher at the University of Oxford. At the time, scientists knew genetics explained some of the risks of getting endometriosis, but they didn't know which genes were responsible. Then, studies tracking families with multiple cases of endometriosis helped researchers zero in on a particular region of chromosome 7. However, there are hundreds of genes in that region, Zondervan says, narrowing the stretch of the chromosome down to a single gene took years of detective work. First, her team sequenced the DNA of women in 32 families, which three or more women had been diagnosed with endo, focusing on that specific chromosome region. The group found that many of the women with the more severe cases have variants of a gene called NPSR1. This gene has not previously been linked to endometriosis, but it has been tied to other inflammatory diseases such as asthma and rheumatoid arthritis. Man, guys, huh. I wonder how similar mapping the human genome is, um, com- like how similar it is to mapping the universe. Because yeah. when they talk about like, yeah, we're, yeah, we totally. were targeting a, a set of genes from this uh, chromosome or this region, it's like, you know, we know that we know that the planet is somewhere in this galaxy <laughs> and the names are basically the same, like SR seventy two dash NX forty three M is the 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 galaxy name, yeah. and like, like, have you actually and, seen it? And they're like, no, but we know it's there. <laughs> we, know, we know it's out there. We've been sending radio waves out. We're waiting for a response. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think it's similar? Uh, probably. Yeah. Like I when mean, you like when it, you it, hear. It, 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 yeah, I like, think so. Like when you when you see an article that's like, yeah, scientists say they may have found uh, a planet that's identical to Earth from a hundred million light years away, and you're like, well, how do they know that? And they're like, I don't know. We just saw a thing of light, and and there was like some <laughs> there were some telescopes that pick up some waves at least of light it was that we there. can't see, and we're pretty <laughs> sure that there's water. <laughs> it was it was at least it was there 175. Million years, million years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so fingers crossed. You're saying there's a chance. So this uh, Zondervan and her colleagues, um, after they after they figure out this NPSR1 gene could be linked to endo, that is also found in respiratory or also found in asthma and, and rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. After that, her and her colleagues then turned to Rhesus macaques. What do you think those are? Dude, you, you yeah. heard me. Dude, was, you heard me look up the pronunciation was, of this earlier today. I was sitting here in the office, and I heard I heard a a, a voice like a like a robotic <laughs> a robotic female voice go Rhesus macaques, and I and I just turned to Jeremy and I went, "What are you doing?" And <laughs> hold on, here wait, this is what you heard. Rhesus macaques. Rhesus macaques. And I and I and, I, and, I, and so I was like, and I and I went, "Why is Jer getting?" the correct robot pronunciation of of one of the names from that from that town hall prank. High prank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prank. yeah. Recess McCox. Reach in touch McCox. Uh, yeah. Reach uh, McCox. Can I see touch McCox? What do you think of what do you think a recess McCox is? Uh, okay, something wait. to do with the throat. All right. What do you think? Uh weird. Go. <laughs> <laughs> something to do with endometriosis. Uh so okay, let me re- let me something to do <laughs> with hold on, hold on. Macaque. Let me say let me let me let me, <laughs> let me say the sentence. Let me say the sentence again so you have a little more context. So after they found that gene, 
they were like, okay, interesting. This gene is is an inflammatory gene that is okay. connected to rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. They they then turned to rhesus macaques. What do you think they they are? It's a it's it, it is something that they were like. Let's look at rhesus macaques and see if there's a correlation there. <laughs> Fuck. I don't, so I, so I, sorry. What did what did you say again? I thought it had something to do with the throat. The throat. I'm okay. Go- great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're gonna stick with that answer. Yeah. Great, Brian. Okay. I'm gonna give you another now. chance here. I thought it was a, a research a research firm that was okay. uh, a research uh, firm. Jenny Rhesus and Daryl McCox <laughs> who uh, basically came together in 1974 to Lawrence uh, start this group. All right. Uh, All right. Good research. Lauren, yeah. what do you think Reese, what do you think a rhesus macaque is? I know what a rhesus macaque is, ah, which is yeah. why I'm laughing my You ass. know what it is? This is yes. What sort uh, of sorcery is this? Uh, uh, a rhesus macaque is uh not that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, you have to go on YouTube. Oh, you damn it. I, I had a I had a fucking file prepped here, but it's not there. Rhesus macaque, rhesus macaque is a monkey. <laughs> It's a type oh, of monkey. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're very cute. A research firm. <laughs> research firm. <laughs> Rhesus and yeah. macaque. <laughs> so that was a good guess. So yeah. Zondervan and her colleagues turned to Rhesus macaque, which is a type <laughs> of monkey. Research and firm. associates. Uh, Esteemed research firm. And these monkeys also <laughs> develop endometriosis. Okay. So when the researchers sequenced the DNA of a group of 850 of these animals, in which 135 had the disease, they saw the same variants in the gene. A similar search in more than 3,000 uh, 3, endometriosis patients, uh, human, and roughly 7,000 people who do not have the disease further confirm the results. The researchers report in Science Translational Medicine Today. Okay, wait, wait, wait. A, a singular one of these monkeys is called a rhesus a re- macaque. The, rhesus macaque is, is a type of monkey. What's, how do you say it? Plural. Like if there's a bunch of Reese's uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of re- there's a bunch of monkeys over there. <laughs> Look at all those fucking monkeys. I mean, that's what you and I would say. A scientist would probably go, oh, yes, a group of Reese's macaques. <laughs> OK, OK. Uh, the next step after that was to try and prevent the gene from turning on. So in mice, the researchers blocked the protein that N- NPSR1 encodes by injecting a solution containing a molecule called SHA68R. Dude, what the, the could also be names. a star. It could, could be a star. Be. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. which is known to inhibit the gene's expression. <clears throat> now, mice don't menstruate, but especially yeah, men mice. What? <laughs> These mice <laughs> yeah, don't right. menstruate. That would be the cutest. Oh, wait, yeah. Hold on, I read that wrong. I said male mice do not menstruate. <laughs> oh. uh, but, re- <laughs> but researchers could simulate the pain of inflammation um, of endometriosis by injecting little pieces of bacteria or uterine lining into their abdomens. Those poor little fucking mice, dude. We yeah. really got to have a conversation Wait, so with someone they're, who does so they yeah, are, Hannah. they are doing the tests on male mice. No, no, I was joking about the male. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, I was no. like, but they, wow. are, but they're also saying mice don't menstruate. Yeah. Period. But, <laughs> Male mice definitely don't mention. <laughs> I would love. I just would love to see like a little mouse tampon. I think that would be really cute. Cool. <laughs> Trying to put it in with the little fingers. You know what's funny though? Yes. A little mouse kind of looks like a tampon. And a mouse would actually be a great tampon. Yeah, a mouse could use yeah, its yeah, yeah. own tail as a tampon. Well, no, it just got the, clogged up. Never mind. That's dumb. You right. could add a cotton ball to the tail of the mouse. Yeah. And then it's at that point it has a its exactly. own. Exactly. Yeah. That could be kind of like a sustainability <laughs> thing, like a repurposed. Yeah. You How took little mice tails and mm-hmm. you know what's really funny is, is that here? you know what's really funny <laughs> is that uh, I'm looking to have um, I'm looking to have Linda Griffith on the show, and I'm going to send her this episode to get her to come on the show, yeah, and well, it's going to be. Yeah, I know. Like, like <laughs> here, um, check send this her. out if you need any further convincing. <laughs> Which you won't. <laughs> send, her, send her the episode time stamped where you're puzzling over what a macaque is. Yeah, 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 exactly. What's a macaque? I thought a macaque, now that you say that and I think of it as an animal, I, I'm pretty sure it's a bird. I think it's a, well, isn't a macaque. You're but hearing but a, you know what? A macaque. You're it thinking is. of a macaque. Yeah. You're thinking so, of a parrot. Anyway, to wrap this up, <laughs> to, wrap, to wrap this up, the rodents that received that SHA68R experienced less inflammation and abdominal pain. Um, mice experiencing abdominal pain shift their weight towards their front paws to compensate, and researchers can measure that weight shift. Oh, oh no! It's very cute. Yeah. I don't so, like that. It's anyway, a, it's, it's it's horrifically cute. It, it's cute and sad as fuck. Yeah. So sad ass. here's to. Uh, I mean, it's really it's always so so fun to hear about possible crazy medical advances. Yeah. 
especially when it is something that affects, I mean, 350 million people. people. It's a lot of people. That's the, that's as if, that's if everybody in the U S had endometriosis. I mean, that's a, think about that. Yeah. Think about if you're walking around New York and you're going, everybody's got it. Yeah. (laughs) Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one in 10, like, I, I mean, how many, how many women or, or people with, with vaginas, like, do you think that you, you know, right now, Half of ev- all, half of everybody I know. Yeah. Uh, wait. Statistically. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought you were saying half of them. Half of them have endometriosis. Yeah. I was 10%. like, no, that's not the stat that 10%. We, we were just talking about. 10%. 10%. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, that made me sad and happy, uh, hopeful and sad for the mice. So uh, let's turn this right around with a, a story that is, it's pretty adorable and pretty sweet. At first I was reading it and I was like, oh, this makes me sad. But then I was like, oh, wait, no, this doesn't make me sad. This makes me glad. Uh, This is from Vice. Uh, The the title is A Literal Hole in the Wall Cafe Opened in Japan for Those Who Struggle with Face-to-Face Contact. Uh, In this cafe, workers with mental health issues... Like a... Like a glory hole coffee shop? <laughs> uh, you <laughs> know what? I didn't read the full article. The Let me just see here. Maybe. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but face-to-face contact. <laughs> when, I, when, when I hear face-to-face contact, I, I don't think of like face-to-face communication. I think of like face-to-face like contacting face to face like yeah well so this, is a, this, like is a cafe where, this is a cafe where you are not forced to make out with your barista <laughs> people who and, feel <laughs> uncomfortable just smashing their faces yeah. together can come here yes. and enjoy their yeah. coffee so in this cafe workers with mental health issues also use fuzzy bear paws as a barrier from any physical interaction when serving so it through the uh through a hole in the in, in a wall no bigger than an airplane window customers are handed their drinks and decorative parfaits replacing the usual hum of scurrying servers in a single fuzzy bear paw, like Winnie the Pooh's, but hairier. So this is like a glory hole cafe for furries. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, it fucking is. Yeah, right. Just like Japan, just to, to make something really strangely highly sexualized. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unlike traditional cafes, the absence of seating and a gray cave-like outer perimeter are the atmospheric traits. But Osaka's Kuma no Te, or Bear Paw Cafe, is not to be mistaken as unwelcoming. The cafe, which opens to the which opens to the general public on Saturday, uh, was con- conceived with the goal of providing employment to those with mental health issues, many of whom struggle to work in settings that require face to face contact. The bear paw, which serves as both a physical barrier and a tactile sense of comfort for customers receiving their drinks, is meant to emulate security. Oh, that's awesome. The founder, Yuichiro Hirimura, who also runs a school that provides counseling and classes on mental health, noted how isolated many of his students felt during the pandemic. Many were also finding it difficult to secure jobs and that didn't demand close contact or provide sufficient support for their mental health concerns. So uh, the image that I accidentally brought up earlier, here's an image (laughs) of the bear paw handing over a what looks like an oat milk latte and... Some beautiful so roses. Can I? I'm I'm a little confused. So this is so, this is a right. You know, it's a coffee shop, like we would know. Is is it just like an outside? Like you're outside and you come up to a window yeah. and you order and and you don't see a human at all. Just you a, just see you a, order a bear and then paw. A bear paw comes yeah. out like Willie's yeah, hands you your drink. Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly it. Yeah, this is like I'm just gonna take a a minute. I'm just going to take a, this opportunity to give a shout out to a really great coffee shop that I like in the city that is a, is a window. Um, Espresso 46, which is on Isleville. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is like the sweetest little coffee shop. Yeah, I love Halifax. it. Too much face to face contact though. It's it. Yeah. It's not, it's not zero face to face, but in ter- relative to coffee shops in Halifax, it's as, it's about as little face to face as you're going to get. It is. Um, and it's just a really nice little coffee shop window. And uh, I feel like the pandemic has really been a boost for them yeah. um, over the, over the years, or over the couple of years, but espresso 46, if you're in Halifax, really check it out on yeah. Isleville. Um, it just reminded me of this. So, mm-hmm. so people are coming, they, they make their order. The paw comes out uh-huh. and serves their drink. They never see the person that made it for them yep. and they don't, and they're not in a sh- coffee shop. So they don't have to, it's not like you're going into the hustle a hustle and bustle of a cafe. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, uh, quote, in Japan, the physically disabled and those with severe mental health issues receive proper care at hospitals, but the people deemed not needy enough 
those experiencing depression, anxiety, harassment at work have very few support systems to fall back on. With this cafe, it's our goal to make work environments more nurturing, he told Vice World News. During the pandemic, the need for mental health support intensified in Japan. Despite nearly a decade of decreasing suicides, the country saw a huge spike in the number of female suicides, an wow. increase of 15%. The government even appointed a loneliness minister to combat the issue by increasing funding for supporting services, which we covered on mm. a previous Feel Good Friday episode. Uh, according to Hiri Mura, about 80 to 90% of his students are women, who, who he said can be unfairly targeted in Japan's male-dominant workplaces. Mm. Quote, a lot of companies still have the senpai, higher-ranking employees, power structure, which means that kohai, lower-ranking employees, can face the brunt of harassment and exploitation. A lot of our female students experience bullying in such environments, he said. On the other hand, Hiri Mura explained, quote, men find it difficult to even seek out mental health support. Talking about your emotions can be seen as weak and unmanly, which leads to a lot of men feeling isolated. One of the six current employees at Kuma no Te Cafe, Megumi Ezawa, 32, said she used to struggle with her workplace relationships. As a female priest in a shrine where men often hold the most senior positions, she often felt isolated and struggled with bouts of anxiety. But after moving back to Osaka, she discovered Hurimura's school and said she learned how to better communicate with people. Quote, I can draw health boundaries and put distance between myself and others when needed, she told Vice World News. Um, I mean, I feel like the coffee shop's going to you know, gonna be... Uh, I, feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of people, even people that aren't facing mental health Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Gonna, if, a gonna, cal- gonna, if a coffee shop opened gonna, up in Halifax and they were like... That. And they were like, yeah, you go to this coffee shop and a bear s- serves you your drink and you don't see anyone. I'd be like, I am going <laughs> sure, yeah. every see, day. I, the, it's the fuzzy bear paw that does it for me. Like, that's what yeah. that's what totally gets me on side. I, like, and some I, people just don't want to interact I, with anybody. I pr- and I, I love this article because it highlights for me the need for, for businesses to be run like that to accommodate people who suffer from either these mental illnesses or even people who might not... Um, have a perceived mental illness, but be an extreme intro introvert and just yeah. be more comfortable operating in a society that isn't so, um, face to face. And especially like living downtown in a city where like, you're just immersed in the hustle and bustle yeah. of the, the day to day. But like, I personally, like when I first heard this, I was like, Oh man, I kind of like going into you coffee do. shops yeah. with people. But then I thought immediately like, Oh, well, that's me though. Yeah. And, what, what if you, you had, know, you know, what if you were on the yeah. autism and, spectrum? And there's, there's plenty of, yeah. there's no shortage of coffee shops for me to go in and enjoy exactly. the hustle and bustle, yeah. but there's not, there's no opportunity, at least here, yeah. really, yeah. with the exception of the Isleville window. And uh, I think uh, what you said about being in a densely populated area, like, um, uh, what show was I watching? Oh, it was the morning show. And mm-hmm. one of the characters is like struggling with living in New York. Mm-hmm. And you know she starts her job at uh, at the that the network, and you know she's she's really struggling just from coming from wherever she was before to being in New York. And I and I was watching that and going like, man, yeah, like I love New York, but I mean I love going to New York for a few days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't imagine just the Living the there. overwhelming nature of being of being like constantly in the in like a a human zoo. I mean, like dude, mm-hmm. pop, oh, crazy populated cities are like human zoos, and it can really drive you nuts and that that gives me energy like i i think of that even moving down like into uh downtown halifax for me in the past few months like like just being i know it's i know it's not the same as that but like i felt like an energy level up from like walking up my door but it's funny like like, you you get energy from that but there's other people that would be completely drained from that you know yeah one of the other cool things is uh hirimura hopes to one day expand the cafe into a bigger more multi-purpose space equipped with mindfulness, meditation, and other relaxation facilities. That's sweet. Yeah. yeah kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Koa, Join Koa, our, our, our friend, Dr. Emily Anhalt. Um, yes. Like the, the mental health mm. gym. Yeah. Like a place to go to exercise your mental health. Yeah. But mm-hmm. everyone's wearing bear costumes and it's only for furries. That's yeah. more my scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just take it. It's like a, it's like Koa with a... Sexy twist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, hot. Um, uh, 
Uh, cool. Oh. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Emily. Uh, speaking, <laughs> of, <laughs> speaking of animals, um, <laughs> moving along to this next piece. This this is this is like, I mean, I don't know. I part of me feels like this is kind of sick boy adjacent because it's more so focused on animals. But this, I thought thought that this was fucking super fascinating. I think I I stumbled across this via Reddit. Um, uh, potty training cows. I'm all I'm all for this. Okay, yeah. dude, you have me at potty. <laughs> why do you, why why do you think we would want to potty train cows? Uh, well, because you know we're used to we're used to jamming them into these barns, yeah. so that we can just like plump them up and butcher them. But when they're jammed on top of each other in these barns, then oftentimes they can like poop and pee all over one another, which makes the butcher meat like less good. So <gasps> okay. if we can potty train them, then we can probably fit more of them into the barns mm. on top of one another. I okay. think it'd probably be, you were onto something for a second and then it got really dark. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go with a no, but you, you kind of had it first. You were, you were on the right track. Okay. Uh, a cow's ex- excretory habits can provide problematic, can prove problematic for the planet. Oh, um, on right, farms where cows are able to roam, uh, they're also able to excrete, excrete, excrete their own, Okay, Jeremy, learn how to read. Uh, they're also able to excrete at their own leisure. So, you know, mm. cow out in the field, in the pasture, they're they're doing whatever they want. They can poop wherever they want. Mm. Um, while this may have a positive effect on the cow's welfare, and that because they have open space and freedom, it comes at a really smelly cost. Cow manure can gather in large quantities, creating a cascade of contamination. Mm. Rainfall can then lead to excrete running off fields and entering local waterways mm. where chemicals found in manure, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, can trigger algae blooms, mm. which is something that's been a big issue here in Nova Scotia, algae blooms specifically. Algae blooms are capable of producing toxins that are harmful uh, to drinking water. And here in Nova Scotia, uh, there, was a, there was a human that got sick from algae blooms recently. There was a, a couple of dogs that have died from algae blooms mm. in lakes here recently. And, and that's not just here. That's That's been popping up uh, down to the U.S. Mm. This actually brings up another problem. I'm dead serious about this uh, that that I don't know enough about. But um, part of the problem is is how close to one another these farms are being built now. Right. They're like, mm. in, especially in, in the States and in the Western United States, they're yeah. like building farms right on top of each other. And you have like an agricultural farm next to... Yeah. Uh, a poultry or meat mm. farm yeah. and the cow specifically the, the cow manure and um, that's like leaching into the ground and, and causing these algae blooms that's yeah. polluting these crops that are adjacent. But like that's, I mean, commercialized farming yeah. in the 21st century is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have that problem with, with cows problem. that are, that are able to roam free. We want that for cows, mm. but then you've got that problem of cows shitting and then that shit, creating problems to the environment mm. and, and creating problems for us. The alternative solution to that is containing cows and their feces in shelters such as barns, where you were going with there. Um, <laughs> yeah, however, sort of. <laughs> as, like that. as one can imagine, this can be detrimental to their well-being. Yeah. And as they are gassy creatures, confining cows into small areas may also lead to concentrated produce, production of ammonia. Mm. So greenhouse gases. So that's bad for the environment, right? I mean, methane, like the... Uh, um Beef farms, uh, beef farming is uh, beef. is uh, like a crazy producer of methane yeah, gas. Yeah, 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 I feel like is. there's not enough of like collaborative, innovative thinking going on though, because like you could have like a helium balloon company that just like partners with the cows and then starts sucking the gas out and filling up party balloons or something like that. I can't that believe would, that they haven't thought of that yet. Yeah, right. Like something like that would just be. Yeah, why are we fucking training cows to? Poop yeah, in a toilet. See, they just need a good ideas guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's right. <laughs> so how do farmers strike a balance between ensuring their cows are healthy, happy and healthy while also protecting the environment and human health? Well, researchers from the Research Institute for Farm Animal Biology, FBN, in Germany and the University of Auckland in New Zealand may have found a solution, which is potty training. <laughs> in a new study published by, uh, in the journal Current Biology, a group of scientists have demonstrated that like baby humans... Cows can indeed be trained to control their excretory habits in a process they have dubbed Mulu. <laughs> cattle. Mulu. Mulu. Uh, cattle, like many other animals uh, or farm animals, are quite clever and they can learn a lot. 
Why shouldn't they be able to learn how to use a toilet? Said Dr. Jan Langbian, uh, animal psychologist at the FBN, said in a press release. I, we got to get this Guys, person on the show. This is, this is this, fucking too good. I, I think you have to stop reading this article because I'm so sad. Like, this makes me so sad that you can, because when you say, Why? as soon as you say potty train, that you can potty train, I, I think I'm, I think I'm vegan now. I think I Why? just... Why? You potty train your dog. Yeah, but I also don't butcher him and fucking eat him later that but you night. you would if he made a real tasty <laughs> burger. Would I? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course you would. I, I, think, I, I think I literally just became vegan on this podcast. It's, it's, it, I, is, it is very... It is a very challenging moral The next conundrum. thing you're going to say is like... And then when they pee, they smile at the humans and then say goodbye as they go oh, off wow. into their nice open field. Do you, want to, do you want to know about the Mulu process? Yes, I do. Well, kind of. But I guess now that I'm vegan, yeah. It's, it's quite a... Yeah. Well, the, the, the Mulu <laughs> now process, that I'm vegan. <laughs> the Mulu process adopted a backward chaining reward-based approach that comprised three steps. In phase one, known as in-latrine training, calves were contained in a latrine and each time that they urinated in this region, they were rewarded with food. Kind of like how you train your dog. <laughs> they got a treat and a little pet on yeah. the head and told they were good boys. Both of your boys were bad boys today. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is made, very they true. Both they both pissed in here. They yeah. both made bad boy messages. Yeah, yeah, they okay. they pissed in the wrong place, so they didn't get the treat. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> now they're burgers. <laughs> Quote, oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, Brian <laughs> Jeremy, they grilled them. <laughs> quote increasing frequency of orientation to the reward as training progressed would demonstrate success in bringing uh micturation under control of the rewards i don't know what that fucking sentence means um but the next phase after getting them happy with pooing and peeing and in the right spot the next phase of mulu was actually toilet training mulu which was used to evaluate how well the calves had established that the latrine was the correct place to void. In this phase, the calves were able to access the latrine from outside through a gate before uh, ex before <laughs> exiting uh, the latrine after voiding. Mm -hmm. Quote, urinations initiated in the latrine were rewarded as for in latrine training, but urinations initiated in the alley were followed by, uh, were followed immediately by an unpleasant stimulus, which bad was a, boy, which was bad, a, which was a punch to the head. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Fuck, bad cow. I mean, I, I, at, the, at, at first, I was, I thought you might be serious because I was like, well, I guess. What do you think? A, what do you think it was? If a human punches a fucking I cow, I mean, dude, they're like eight hundred pounds. Like, it's a what cattle prod. You should never punch a cow. No, it wasn't a cattle prod. No, uh, that's even worse. That's 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 bad. Yeah, uh, it was it was it? it was three splashes of water. I guess I guess cows don't like any splashes of water. Oh, oh is it like like what you do I with can't. cats when you spray them yeah. with a the little bottle? Yeah, a little oh, spray in his face. Guys, I actually hadn't fully read this article until right now. As a, as a putt, so they use the three. I just splashes. I just want to say <laughs> this is way too high a level of intelligence for me to ignore this any longer. Like I didn't the, of cows. Yeah, I'm I'm done. <laughs> of, of, of eating cows i was a vegetarian fully for like dude for a long time Wait, and i haven't been are you actually Brian, done too? and, I, ha and I haven't been for a few years <laughs> how many times have we heard this yeah uh, yeah a lot yeah i can't <laughs> wait until the next time we have a group uh, like a team breakfast meeting <laughs> and tay's like i'll get the uh, extra extra hungry man and put the uh, lots of extra bacon three all the three. sausages and and just pound wait, the eggs in it wait me. no i'm wait no, I, I was bacon I was, that's pork right okay no, I, the I, little piggies Fuck them! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Do, do, do you know if do you know if they can be potty trained? <laughs> do you know if they can be potty yeah. trained? Have these you... pigs been splashed? <laughs> no. Give them to me. No, they just no. stack. No, I was. Uh, this is gonna make even more. Sad. No, no, for real. I was. Uh, oh. I was. I was. I was fully vegetarian for about six years, and I and I never and I. I didn't eat meat at all, yeah. except for except for when we went to <laughs> <laughs> except for when Mary's. we went to Mary's. But <laughs> no, 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 I don't know why. And you'd sit there and go, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. For the for the first for the first for the first um, ever that we went for the first really long time that we went to Mary's, I got oh I got a veggie omelet, <laughs> the waffle with, and eggs. I got a veggie omelet. Dude, no one cares what your egg. fucking order was. Honestly, okay. no, nobody actually cares. What I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just telling you that I was, and then I haven't been for mm. for probably a few years now. Mm -hmm. Where <laughs> fuck <laughs> off, dude. Ignorance is really bliss, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah, it really is. But when you, but when you are confronted with these fucking, you're, you're like, dude, these motherfuckers are getting these little puppies trained <laughs> to go piss somewhere specific. <laughs> like, God uh, damn. And now so, we're eating them. So they went yeah. on to say, as a punishment, at first we used. 
in-ear headphones and we played a very nasty sound whenever they urinated oh, outside. Geez. Oh my I'd god, dude, they did the that face. at Guantanamo, man. This is, this <laughs> yeah. is torture. Hold on. But then Langian said, we thought this would punish the animals, not too adversely, but they didn't care. They're Ultimately, jamming. a splash of water worked at, well as a gentle deterrent. <laughs> The final stage of Mulu training involved an increase in the size of the area outside of the latrine by extending the alley that led to it. In a new study, 16 calves were trained for several weeks, from which 11 calves were successfully potty or Mulu trained. Langbian and colleagues believe that the success of this process is due to establishing a rewards-based control over the void voiding reflex right at the start of training. Oh, I have a re request here. Whenever it says calves... Baby calves in the rest of this. Don't say baby calves, can but it just, does say calves. I mean, just, which are can babies? Can you just say young cattle or something like that, so that I can feel okay eating? Could them you later? actually? Could you actually? Could you actually say veal? When the tasty veal uh, voided. Could you say in, adolescent bovine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh my god! Otherwise, I, I'm never eating I feel cow like I'm, again. Uh, they also believe that oh, the look. that the rate of successful training could be increased and may be dependent on the nature of the cow. "Quote: After 10, 15, or 20 years of researching with cattle, we know that animals have a personality and they handle different things in different ways. They are not all the same." Langbian said. La la la. Brian just put uh, earplugs in. I'm fucking vegan now, guys. But, but here, okay, so yes. The idea of training cows to pee and poo in certain places does I, I get I get where you're saying that it, it kind of makes you it kind of makes you uh, realize that they aren't that different from Donut who's walking around here and we think is the cutest thing we want to snuggle him and it's like when you watch those videos of like like calves or or sorry uh, adolescent bovine uh, bovines at like rehabilitation <laughs> centers and there's like videos of their of the people working there and they're like snuggling up to them. It like, it does. It is oh one of those God. things that makes you just go, dude, Oh fuck. But, but, but <clears throat> wouldn't you say that this Mulu, um, technique is probably a beneficial thing. Let's just say uh, like there was a mandate that came out and I know, I know people fucking hate mandates, but especially <laughs> farmers you know what? Dude, from you Alberta, know, dude, but you know who hates <laughs> mandates? People who <coughs> do their own research. Yeah, yeah those so people are smart. Imagine there was a mandate that was put out that all farms had to t had to train their cows to use this Mulu process. It would be better for the environment. It would be better for I think yeah, yeah. also the environment, not the environment, but also for the cows. And cow eating is not going away in a in a, in a amongst the mass population no, anytime no. soon. It no. is if people listen to this episode. Yeah. Uh, hey man, I, I'm I'm more I'm still gonna order my five guys tomorrow. Yeah, well, I mean, like one third of the cows were too stupid to be potty trained. It's at only like <laughs> right. it's at only something like eleven out of the sixteen. Actually, so. you know what? I'll yeah. only I only eat from that population. It, yeah. Even like yeah. you, it was saying a that dumb cow. Okay, thank you. Makes I'll me feel it. okay with it. Like yeah. I, like just hearing you say that, I'm like, oh, well, I'll just tell myself that <laughs> cows that I'm eating are from that one third. They're stupid. <laughs> the stupid. They're cows. moopid. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I feel, uh, you know, Mulu. <laughs> I feel. I feel bad about my life now. <clears throat> do you guys want to move into what the hell? Let's do it. Let's do it. Rip Always. the band. Rip the bandaid off this. Off this festering. Where sore could this of a possibly go next? <laughs> well, I thought we covered this, but I I couldn't find anything in the uh, in the the doc here. Um, a man has died. After eating too much licorice. <laughs> oh yeah, Jer asked me if we had covered this earlier. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, don't I don't like where this is going because I like. Was licorice. it black licorice? Because if it was, he deserved it. I <laughs> like black licorice. The 54-year-old construction worker from Boston in the U.S. was hospitalized after suffering cardiac arrest while eating fast food. Dr. Jacqueline Henson wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine. Dr. Henson added the man. Quote, gasped suddenly with full body shaking and a loss of consciousness. He aspirated. And he was rushed to hospital. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and he didn't God. fucking use a pillow. He, he didn't. He panicked. Dude, you gotta fucking get those. Gotta get those. He panicked. Dude, you gotta, gotta, get, gotta get those hips up, dog. Holy fuck. I feel bad making fun of a dead man, but at the same time. Oh, shit. I forgot he was dead. Now I feel yeah, worse he's dead. Too. But you know what? 
We don't know. This is FGF Feel Guilty Friday. <laughs> Whoa, dude, Jared just went to a dark place. You know what? He probably didn't get vaccinated and deserved it. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Uh, <laughs> doctors at Massachusetts General Hospital conducted an ultrasound and Dr. Henson wrote he had, quote, dysfunction in the left ventricle of his heart. Quote, there's no history of chest pain, uh, uh, dys- dyspnea, or symptoms of heart failure or dysrhythmia, she wrote. Quote, he had a poor diet consisting primarily of several packages of candy daily. Wow. Three weeks earlier, he had switched the type of candy he was eating. He had no sick contacts, fevers or chills, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea. He didn't have a history of using opiates. Er, he did have a history of using opiates, but it stopped three years before being hospitalized. And he had no family history of cardiac or respiratory problems. Doctors questioned whether his condition could be due to his licorice consumption. They noted succus. They noted succus, succus macacus, <laughs> which is a type of monkey. <laughs> they, they, noted, they noted succus, succus licorice or licorice juice could cause edema, oh, headaches, fuck. and dys, uh, dys, dyspnea on exertion. Doctor Elizer Eldman wrote in his diagnosis: the construction worker had suffered metabolic renal vascular and cardiac toxic effects from apparent mineral mineral cortoid excess due to licorice consumption. So this guy eats so much licorice that his kidneys failed. Jeez, so he was like, he was like, all right, I'm eating too many gummies. I'll fucking switch over to licorice. That's gotta be better. And it, I actually heard that too. Him. So if this was Mythbusters, it would be Mythbusters. This, because... this myth is this myth is legit. Wait, this was on Mythbusters? Yeah, it was the f- <laughs> season finale. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was actually this guy, and they weren't able to show the end of the episode. This guy was the host of Mythbusters. See, I can tell you're being died. sarcastic, but don't act like Mythbusters doesn't bust <clears throat> crazy myths. They do bust <laughs> crazy myths, and um, you're hearing it here first, folks. We just busted it. Licorice does kill. Plausible. The myth has always been that it don't. It do. <laughs> you know what I thought though? Um, I thought licorice was healthier too, and I had actually heard that it's good for um, uh, pooping. Like I heard licorice is a good natural laxative. Like didn't actually, know. actually. Didn't, didn't know. Yeah, but yeah. the yeah. licorice that you're buying, like Twizzlers, aren't the thing though. You know? Sugar-free like gummy like bears are <laughs> natural. Like, have you ever read the reviews for Haribo sugar-free gummy bears? Does it make you shit? It's a treat. They're really funny. I'm, I'm Googling. A treat for your butthole? No. No, you mean the reviews are a it's treat. It's not a treat. The reviews are a treat to read. Oh. Yeah. But the experience is not a treat for anyone else. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. It's it, really, makes you, yeah. Do, it makes you do do. It says it uh, you licorice, licorice root. Licorice root has an anti-inflammatory effect and it may may aid a digestion. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy may, maybe thought, maybe heard, read that and went, hey, yeah, I guess <laughs> I do like candy and licorice is candy and I'm eating 23 bags of candy a day. I mean, I think you're just getting, when you're eating licorice, licorice in quotes, you're eating candy with a licorice root flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. this, this says after a meal sure. has settled, drinking a cup of licorice root tea, which I think is something very different than Twizzlers or yeah. nibs. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like licorice th- root flavor with 85 grams of sugar. Yeah. Uh, so, so Dr. Neil Butala wrote that within hours of hospitalization, hospitalization, the patient suffered low urine output <coughs> before his kidneys failed to produce anymore. Quote, the, the goals of care were discussed with his family who declined renal replacement therapy and the patient was sub- subsequently transitioned to comfort measures only. He died wow. comfortably with his family at his bedside 32 hours, uh, after presentation Quote, on the basis of additional history obtained from his family, the patient was eating one or two large packages of soft candy daily. Three weeks Whoa. before presentation, he had switched from eating fruit flavored soft candies to eating licorice flavored soft candy mm-hmm. that contained glyrosic acid, which is converted <laughs> into glycerohitinic acid after it's consumed. And that was the thing. That uh, that ultimately ended this man's life. Um, uh, this article, uh, uh, Lauren just forwarded me the article of the sugarless <laughs> Haribo gummy bear reviews on Amazon are the most insane thing you'll read today. Why on earth would anyone buy these sugar-free bears after reviewers wanted not to eat more than 15 at a time? Quote, unless you were trying to power wash your intestines. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
One review titled, Just Don't, Unless It's a Gift for Someone You Hate. <laughs> they said, what came out of me felt like someone tried to funnel Nigeria, Niagara Falls through a coffee <laughs> straw. I swear, my sphincter was screaming. Oh, it felt wow. like it felt like my de- my delicate starfish was a gaping maw projectile <laughs> vomiting a torrential flood of toxic waste. That's really one hundred percent liquid, flammable liquid, napalm. <laughs> <laughs> another another title, another review titled: "Be sure to buy OxyClean too." <laughs> Oh my god. They're quoted saying, be sure to buy a tub of OxyClean with this to get the blood and diarrhea stains out of your underwear. I can't, guys, I can't, I can't handle it. Oh my god, that's funny. And then another another review titled, Yup, believe the hype. (laughs) Guys, guys. Quote, I saw the product reviews and told some coworkers. So we bought a bag because who doesn't want to spend the workday on the toilet and get paid, right? Bought them in the morning. And then a bunch of the guys immediately down a handful each. Within a half hour, they were in the bathroom. Best moment of the day was when one of them, who had been in the bathroom for half an hour by that point, texted one of the others, quote, if you think it's a fart, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust the fart. Uh, Holy guys. God, there's so many of them. Oh, my God. That's so funny. <sighs> we uh, should order a bag. Lauren, guys, thank you for sending that to we me. It was so bag. fucking good. Guys, licorice, licorice, large ba- bag of licorice is one pound. Okay. So there's 453 grams in the bag per four pieces, which is 45 grams, which means there's 10 servings, which is 40 pieces. Okay, so we can times this by 10. So one bag is 35 grams of sugar. Ooh. Times that by 10. That's 350. Also, Wait, by the 350 way, 350 grams of sugar in the bag. 350 grams of sugar 35 in the bag. 35 per serving. Per four pieces, right. And 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 four and that. Four pieces, 35 grams of sugar is 12% of your recommended sugar. That, but like, wow. I mean, that's a lot. But when you pair it against, man, I was, I so looked at a, two of those, a, 650 grams of sugar. Yeah, two of those. Day. That, Dude, that, the, that's that's a, the, the that's sugar a didn't pound. kill him. That's, that's the thing. The sugar I know. didn't kill him. I know. It, was, it, was like a, it was like a like metabolic acid. reaction. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. But, I, the, but I'm just, from a sugar standpoint. It's a lot. Dude, that is a pound. That is a pound and a bit of sugar. But look at a, look at a can of pop too or a red bull yeah dude that it, doesn't come near well, that doesn't it, come near dude, i mean you're probably you're probably getting that but 35 per serving per serving no so per like, can per, in a yeah. can of pop you're probably getting about the same as the four pieces about 50 yeah. probably yeah something like that it's like four it's like and you know there's people out there yeah. drinking more than uh, yeah, some people do, some, some mean, people yeah. you, 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 some people yeah. carry around a two liter bottle of dude if you're one well, of those people please switch to bottle switch to bubble switch to just burgers from dumb cows oh my god yeah. don't you know? do that and just put a bunch of sugar on it um fuck guys oh, that man. made me laugh so hard not the guy that died but the fucking <laughs> haribo gummy bears that we should get them and we should do a should we should do, do a live. we should do it out at a live show no, live from the bathroom we should make floors. two videos we should make two videos <laughs> one video here's some youtube content here's some youtube content one, one video challenge is one chip challenge yeah we're gonna do the one chip challenge and freak out uh which we wanted to do that we were on a patreon call mm. Uh, a couple weeks ago, hanging out with our with our little sweet potatoes, and uh, I had just seen a video about the one chip challenge. Yeah, and we went to go buy them, dude. They ain't cheap. They're not cheap. It was it's two one chip. It was two hundred bucks for three three chips plus shipping. Yeah, two hundred bucks yeah. for three chips. Yeah. It's a fucking three lot. individual chips. We'll do for, it though for volunteer for, for voluntary suffering. Yeah. Hey, and this like video real, gets and a real suffering. If this yeah, video yeah. on YouTube gets a thousand views, Is that my my phone. We'll do the I one chip so. challenge. <laughs> it's angry. Do you want to get that, Tay? <laughs> no. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, this was uh, this was really fun, guys. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, and folks, I think that you had a lot of fun with this one too. And so, thank you for tuning in. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, every week we say it, and we really mean it. Leave a rating and a review. Uh, don't leave. Actually, leave a rating and a review. And in your review, just pretend that you're reviewing those gummy bears. Uh, <laughs> pretend you found yourself at the wrong place and you're leaving a review for uh, how dis- disasterly those gummy bears destroyed your asshole. Yeah. Like give, and and, and just, just to totally fuck, fucking confuse anyone who shows yeah. up at Apple Podcasts. But anytime that you would say um, Harry Bo. Or candy or anything or gummy, 
Use Sick Boy. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. Adult bo- Bovine. Yeah. Uh, and folks listening on Spotify, uh, just hit the follow button. And uh, everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching on, uh, on, on YouTube, thank you. Leave a comment below. Make sure that you uh, hit the bell icon so you know that uh, you get a notification every time that we put a video up. And of course, uh, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you here as a part of our community. Um, and uh, we just love hanging out with you guys every fucking week. And if you are too timid to tell us your um, your horrific Harry Bow story uh, in the very public review section of iTunes um, or Apple Podcasts, then uh, iTunes, what is it, 2015? <laughs> um, then uh, you can send your you can send that experience of how you've of how you've um, you know destroyed your friend's toilet um, or your work toilet with Harry Bow, and you can do that by sending it to letters. At, sickboypodcast.com and we will probably read that experience on the very very public podcast platform you know that we have <laughs> if you want to be a guest on the show you can go to sickboypodcast.com slash contact and fill out the guest form and maybe we'll have you on the show as always a huge well before we do I think we have a, speaking of sending us uh, sending us letters I think we have a little a little letter low if you want to hit it we yeah, do right. and I, I think we we missed this one last week but incredible use of emojis in this letter nice. it says Sweet. dear friends then there's three squirrels and a mermaid which i am assuming represent the four of us <laughs> nice. which tickles me it's actually a very it's a very, it's actually a very complex code but yeah. so this is from cal q drop <laughs> it's where we go one we go all <laughs> he says i work as a porter at a hospital in toronto ontario skyline emoji in our workplace they ask that you get all your vaccinations updated during the hiring process needle emoji for sure <gasps> emoji <laughs> this includes measles mumps rubella ver- varicella is that a type of noodle it, hep a she, and b funny. to name a few and yes above all flu germ emoji Unfortunately, it's not a deal breaker and failure to update any or all vaccines doesn't mean they won't hire you. Thumbs down emoji. (laughs) Therefore, putting vulnerable patients and the staff at risk. Nerdy wearing glasses emoji. (laughs) Thank you for your amazing podcast. Like cute blushy smile emoji. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Hi, Lauren. LOL. Wave emoji. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank thank you for sending that. That uh, really does mean a lot. And uh, again, like Tay said, letters at Sick Boy Podcast or slide into the DMs if you want to shout out and uh, and have something read on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, And thanks, as always, to the fine folks who make this show happen. Uh, Lauren, we love you. We just appreciate you. Mm -hmm. We 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 just think the world of you. Taylor, Jer, you guys are say uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, fucking say. It. What do you fucking gotta say? Yeah, say it, you like, fucking squirrel. You're like like you're both eights out of ten. I'll take it. Yeah. Say it. I'll say Steam it. out of ears emoji. <laughs> eight, eight and a half. <laughs> Seven and a half. Uh and uh and you know who's a ten out of ten? Jeff Lonis. Yeah, uh, oh hell yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh he's a manager uh, mm-hmm. of this little monkey you know, hiding eyes get. emoji. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> monkey covering mm-hmm. who's the fire mm-hmm. emoji? Uh, the fire emoji is Rich O'Coin. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, mm-hmm. those fire tracks. I can't wait to see Rich's show in October. Yeah. Who's the uh, who's the who's the swirly poop emoji? Oh, uh, Donovan. Yeah, but he has nothing to do with this episode. Exactly. That's yeah. why. Yeah, that's why. He's the <laughs> stinky poop emoji. Usually he's not he's, even here. Usually he's a shooting star. Yeah, that's right. On Fridays he's a swirly poop. That's right. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's uh, thanks everybody else. That is it for this week. <laughs> I'm Brian. <laughs> I'm Taylor. I'm Lauren. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Sick Boy. Yeah.